Welcome to another episode of The San Pai Show. My name is Victor Escalante. I am the producer and co-host. Joining me today in the studio is the man of the hour, Sam Pai. Sam, say hi to our listeners. Hey, I want to say hello and I want to say thank you to all you guys that are downloading my podcast and just really liking and subscribing. It's been an incredible last two weeks to just really see these numbers uh, go sky high. But it's you, Rasa, that makes That's right. The Senpai Show is the only show out there that is for the Raza. It's by the Raza, for the Raza. Yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> it. That's all about us now. So, Sam, we're going to talk about culture today and the nuance of culture, of being Mexican, of being Mexican-American, of being a Latino, you name it. Nothing uh, is, is off the the topic everything's on the table okay so let's go ahead and start uh with uh language part of your your brand i would say is your the way you speak ocho you speak uh, some english some spanish you mix it up and and some of the uh, words in spanish uh, you don't know them properly you just make up whatever you don't know, but people understand you. And that's the thing is that people understand you because you connect with them in, in a way that that they know how much you care about them and their business to where uh, they really don't care that much about how you communicate with them. Remember the old saying uh, from uh, Harvey McKay, uh, the author of the book, How to Swim with the Sharks? without being eaten alive. He said, people don't care how much you know about them so long as people know how much you care about them. Remember how he would have personal files on all his clients, uh, personal files that had all their information on marriages, divorces, birth dates, anniversaries. It's like he had lots of intelligence about his clients because he had the pulse of the clients to know what they need, their needs were, and how he was always catering to them. So, uh, so talk to us about how we communicate with our clients, uh, Sam. Um, you know, I was in. A, I'm a real estate broker, so I was in a marketing class of uh, real estate, and uh, we were in a the class. There's only a few of us uh, Mexican Americans and, and Latinos that were in the class. Maybe out of 35, 38 people, there was like four or five of us. And the marketing uh, instructor said, Sam, how do you uh, adapt to your clients or talk to your clients? And I said, it depends on who I'm talking to. And she goes, oh, you mimic your people. You make fun of your, I don't make fun of my people, but the mimicking, what do you mean? Well, if you're talking to a Chicano from the hood, are you talking ese vato type lingo? I said, well, I get to, but you can't because right. I am Mexican-American. And so depending on who I'm talking to in business, I try to win that trust by making them feel comfortable with me because being born in a household that was my mom from Mexico and my dad, Chicano, I could play both roles. And that helped me really win a lot of clients over because I understood both sides of the board for them. And so, you know, it's just uh, interesting how a lot of my friends that are Mexican-American fourth generation speak no Spanish. Right. And so me, I, listening to my mom and talking to my mom, it was all Spanish. But my dad would always say, hey, speak English, not Spanish. You know, growing up at that time in the 70s and the 80s. We even have some listeners that don't speak Spanish. <laughs> and they complain that, hey, we need some programming for us, okay? Well, uh, we don't understand what you're saying in Spanish. So we're talking to our listeners in the, in the way that they prefer. Uh, so we're meeting them where they are and what they need to, to hear from us. Uh, and we're very sensitive to to... Each and every one of you that is listening, uh, I encourage you to write to me. I'm the one that gets the emails to the Sampais pod 
at gmail.com. If you have a question for Sam, Sam, I will ask your question to Sam and he will answer it on the pot. So Sam, you learned to speak to customers in a way that you could connect with them, in a way that they trusted you. Trust is one of three reasons why people do business or they buy from, from a company. Uh, do you want to talk about the other two reasons that people buy from uh, companies or individuals? Three reasons. One of them is trust. Yeah, they, you got to have trust. Uh, the other thing is they got you got to be able to solve the problem for these individuals. Being knowledgeable. You got to... You, you, competent. And, yes. Um, what is that? Uh, competent and... Um, they got to like you. Yeah, okay. that, <laughs> they got to like you. If they don't like you... <laughs> that they won't do me... They'll, they'll take their business wherever uh, wherever someone is nice to them. So, so again, listeners, uh, you got to be able to speak the language of your customer and you got to understand the nuance of their language because just the word frijoles, okay, doesn't mean the same thing. In, uh, you don't say frijoles to everyone from Latin America. Uh, the Cubans say habichuelas, okay? Right, right, right. And, and other words for beans. So it's like you got to pick up a little bit of nuance. We're not necessarily recommending that you go study another language, but it's like you got to understand the culture and the language. You uh, definitely do. Um, you got to get past the myth. You know, for the Mexicano, um, they're two or three days early in their payments. Yes. They come and pay constantly because that's what they taught because there was no credit. Right. This is your word, and then right. you show up on Friday. And they talk about us, Mexicanos, uh, Mexican-Americans, or Chicanos. No, don't lend them any yeah. money, because they, they didn't say what Friday. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, it's, it's uh, the different styles in thinking uh, versus uh, the Mexicano that, that they say they got word. And, and a lot of times, you know, Knowing my mom, my grandmother that were from Mexico, you know, the, the old sayings, show me who you hang around, I'll tell you who you are. And, you know, uh, giving your face when problems come to face the issues of, yeah. of whatever's there. To say, I'll take care of it, okay? Yes. And, yes. and knowing that, that you stood by your word and you were a, a person that would take care of the problem, whatever it was, whether it was a debt, whether it was something that you had to make good on, it's like you, you, you were a person of your word. That's it. That that made a lot of difference. And and you know there was days I was short, a day late, dollar short. But at the end of the day, my grandmother always taught me you have to face the issues. Yeah. And that's what I did. And you know there there's a lot of uh, things that are the same in our culture, but because it's first generation or maybe fourth generation that yes. has lost that touch of the culture. And so a lot of my friends didn't speak Spanish, and they would get upset uh, with the one speaking. Ah, you're in America, you got to speak. But who said that was the language, right. brother? And, right. And at the end of the day, a lot of them were my cousins, so I had to talk to them. So I was in the middle yeah. uh, of the Chicanos and the Mexicanos, but I got to to relate to both sides and understand. What do you think of people that change their name to sound <laughs> American? <laughs> Solis Solis. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, good terrorist. <laughs> it's uh it's uh funny but at the same time if they're fourth generation you can understand because yes we were taught to simulate into yes the system the process the structures and you know a lot of times you look at some of these old movies where these cowboys were trying to train the indians yeah. and they just have them at the schools and they're having them wear their clothes when they're used to being out right. in the open but you know it's just uh you have to look at it from a different perspective and understand what generation you're talking to because there's... All right, let's, so let's go there. Let's go there. So let's say that you are you have a client that, that is a immigrant, okay? Uh, immigrant, uh, speaks a little bit of English, mostly Spanish. How do you uh, talk to them? How do you deal with them? Um, I speak to them in their language, okay? Spanish, and, and I understand the culture, having my mom being from Mexico and grandmother, um, how to salute. You know, most of us, we don't salute if we don't know the person. Yeah. But my grandmother said, don't care if you know him, don't know him, you salute a mí. Yeah. And so we were brought up with that. And when I was brought up with the yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. And so, you know, that culture of those individuals, 
uh, being humble and they see that, that you took the time to service them, those people are loyal. They're yes. Loyal to your company. Yes. You're listening to The Senpai Show. We'll be right back. ¿Estás buscando soluciones efectivas para crecer y prosperar en tu empresa? Entonces, LM Solution es para ti. Con nuestra plataforma innovadora, puedes crear, administrar y seguir el progreso de tus programas de capacitación en línea de manera eficiente y fácil, desde el reclutamiento hasta el desarrollo del personal. Ofrecemos una solución integral para tus necesidades de formación. Visita nuestra página web hoy mismo en lmsolutionstx.com y comienza a optimizar el aprendizaje en tu empresa. Nuestra plataforma es como si tuvieras todo un equipo de personal, tecnología a tu alcance. Visítanos hoy. Hey Tony, why the long face? You look like your dog just died. Damn, am I that obvious? I just found out that I owe the IRS over $50,000 in back taxes, and I don't know what I'm going to do. My credit is already in the tank and I have exhausted my reserves after my business went south. Well, if I were you, I would call Sam Pais with LMS Solutions. I just heard him say on his podcast that he helped one of his clients with a tax liability of $1 million settle for $9,000. Man, if I could get out from under this big weight, I could get a fresh start rather than close my business and still owe the IRS. So what are you waiting for? I hear your first consultation is free. I have his number here 281-977-6572 or you can go to his website lmssolutionstx.com. I'm on it. I'm calling him right now. There's a reason why I keep you around. You know a lot about business. You made my day. How about we grab some lunch? Of course it's on me. I'm glad to help out. What are friends for? You need to subscribe to The Sam Pais Show. He now has tips on Mondays and Wednesdays to help you grow your business. You have made one new subscriber. Let's go. I'm starving. Call LMS Solutions today. 281-977-6572. You will be glad you did for the rest of your life. We now return you to the Senpai Show. As second generation. Second generation means, that, or, or rather first generation, that they're born here, uh, children of immigrants. How do you talk to them? Well, I want to understand if, if both parents are from Mexico or one parent's born here or the that you just made it hard. <laughs> yes, because <laughs> at the end of the day, that generation. Let's go there. Let's go there. Yeah. So one is born here, one is from Mexico or some other Latin American country. How do you talk to them? Yes. Uh, they're bilingual, obviously. Yes. They're, uh, man, these kids, these uh, first generation, they yeah. got it down. And, yeah. and they're looking to protect their parents. Yes. Because they've seen what their parents struggled not knowing English and then maybe they got burnt by some of the they contracts. got taken advantage and yet yeah. um, because the contract wasn't read right and everything and you got to understand that some of these kids were representing their kids at eight and ten years reading a contract knowing that the adult the Wally or the Americano or whatever on the other side was taking advantage on yeah. that contract so you got to understand when these people are taking advantage of how do those kids feel You know, because they didn't understand the lingo. They didn't understand that. And they didn't know enough to go see an attorney to right. interpret the contract. So, you know, uh, I look at that generation to really want to help them uh, when they don't know. Look, this is 40 years of my experience, but this is what you got to look at. Because what I'm really trying to do is make it a win-win. Yeah. And this next generation is my future. Yes. So I really want to understand 
who I'm talking to and what that mindset is on that generation. Sam, I want you to talk about being a fiduciary. What Explain to the listeners what a fiduciary is and why they really need to understand who they're doing business with that, that is a fiduciary that is looking out for their interest, irrespective of commissions that they're going to make. It's like they got the customer's interest first and foremost, and, and then whatever commissions come from that is secondary. Talk about that. Uh, and we hear that in, in real estate uh, uh, quite a bit, uh, fiduciary responsibility and, oh. and banking and, and, and investments. And pretty much anything that you're licensed in the state of yes. Texas, whether it's insurance, real estate, yeah. banking, um, funeral director, yeah. just you have a fiduciary responsibility to represent that customer, that client in their interest. Yes. Not in the license interest about how much money you're going to make because you can be fined, sued, and you can lose your license. So that fiduciary responsibility for me is to be able to interpret what I believe that contract is. And believe me, contracts are made by attorneys. So I, I can't change anything on the contract, but I need to try to at least explain, in my opinion, what I believe that is on that contract, but also recommend they should see their attorney to get correct interpretation of the law. I heard that uh, that uh, tip, Sam, that has saved me uh, with several real estate transactions, thousands of dollars. When when I, I heard this business uh, uh, consultant on, on his radio show say, every single real estate contract, you need to have it reviewed by real estate attorney, okay? Yes. And, and because again, uh, we don't understand all the nuance of uh, real estate law. Right. And when I took uh, these contracts to a real estate attorney, he rewrote them and, and said, this is, this is what you take to the realtor. And the realtor was not happy because again, he found some ways that it, he was going to benefit from the way it was written. Right. And, and I stood to lose thousands of dollars. So that's a very valuable tip that I want to pass on to the listeners is that uh, uh, if you are faced with a real estate contract, uh, have it reviewed by a real estate attorney. That's it. That's it. Now, being a licensed real estate broker, my fiduciary responsibility is that my realtors act and perform in a professional way that the rules that are set by Texas Real Estate uh, Commission uh, also, as an insurance agent, we have fiduciary responsibility to represent that customer with the contracts that we have from the insurance companies. Now, my, I have a son that's an investor. He wanted to be a realtor, and I said, no, sir. Uh, I'm the real estate broker. My other son, Michael, is a realtor, but my son, Jeremy, is an investor. And I, he goes, Dad, why wouldn't you let me? I said, because the only obligation you have is to yourself. Right. As an investor. So I want people to be clear that you need to make sure if the individual is licensed, because now he has a fiduciary responsibility. But if he's an investor bringing you a contract, the only thing the investor says is that I need to represent me, myself and right. I. And, you know, you have to go get checked by an attorney yeah. and check the contract. So yeah. that's the difference between somebody licensed and somebody being an investor. One time I was faced with uh, purchasing a home and uh, the, um, uh, the realtor wanted to uh, sell us the home. And I said, no, I said, you're representing yourself and your client. I said, I need representation from my own realtor. Yes. And, and so I'm going to, you can recommend the realtor uh, that I could interview, or I'm going to have to find my own realtor. And, and again, that's making sure that my interests are protected instead of be, me being given something that it's purely for the interest of the realtor. You know, the real estate is in an uproar right now. Yeah. The I had a client call me this week uh, because uh, he is a lender. Okay. <laughs> He's a lender and, and he's seeing the fallout from, from, uh, from this and supposedly the ruling is going to come down in a couple of months or soon? A couple of weeks. A couple of weeks. We've already got to make the changes. Okay. Contract. 
Okay. Starting August, uh, I want to say 19th, 20th, somewhere around there. All the contracts are changed now. Give us your prediction. What's going to happen to the industry? Well, uh, years ago, I, I think before the pandemic, um, I have the Rasa comes in. They already negotiated a deal. I the buyer and the seller. They, yeah. They, all they come to me is to get a contract and go to the title company because I've been preaching. You got to yeah. go to the title company. Right. To make sure that the title is, is clear. clear. Yes. <laughs> so, um, um, a lot of them would come to me and I said, "Hey, ah, give me five hundred bucks, take it to the title company, and pay me." And yeah. my realtors would get mad at me. Why are you doing it for five hundred? Because they're bringing the buyer and the seller. Yeah. All I'm doing is putting the contract yeah. together. And taking it to the title company, I didn't do anything else. They already negotiated yeah. the deal. So a lot of people now with this change, well, how are you going to get paid now from the buyer? So I'm still charging 500 bucks. And, yeah. You know, I'm taking it to the title company and, and I'm good. So I look at it as volume. Yeah. Uh, McDonald's, Walmart, I look at the volume part of it. And not only am I going to do a real estate contract, they're going to need a mortgage loan. They're going to need an insurance uh, they might need inspections. They might. So at the end of the day, I, I'm bringing in those services uh, for that client, and I'm able to take care of them at a at a minimum fee that they know that I'm looking out for them. Yeah. And so at the end, I'm either going to do their taxes, their insurance, you know, just real estate, mortgage loan, and this is what's happening right now. Because you're looking at building a customer for generations. I bet you you have clients that are generations deep oh, man, I, I got a third generation <laughs> yeah now. you're dealing with yes. grandchildren yes. yes that that their grandparents did business with you and That's because it. they trusted you again trust like and and being knowledgeable yeah they uh, why would they go to anyone else That's it. character and competence yeah. are the two things that i believe that you got to have is character so that people trust you and you got to have the competence in what you're doing so college and you built that through straight talk with your customers. Yes. Straight talk. <laughs> talking Rasa, talking English. That's it. That's it. You know, I, I just, I tell people all the time, knowing who you are, I, I can relate to you. You know, whether you're Mexican-American or Mexicano, I, I can relate to you and understand the culture. Well, what do you think, Sam? Is that enough show? It's enough show, boy. We put a lot out there. <laughs> yeah, we I'll did. Still think about it. <laughs> Let's see if we get any haters uh, uh, talk to us about how we 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 weren't true to to the language. We weren't purists with language. Until next time, go out and have a great week.